Now there are two ways to define a sprite when it comes to syntax. One way is to call new sprite, add some brackets with a semicolon at the end, and then fill out its properties here. For example, position would equal position, and you would go on and finish that. The other way is to just call new sprite and then modify the properties on the local variable like so. And there are some that will require a method to be used, like some properties are private so you would have to actually call a function to set them. Uh, I'll show that in just a second. But let's fill this out. So there are my properties being passed into the function. And for this example, I'm not passing in an asset ID. I'm just going to hard code what I want for this toy, which is you know fine. It just really depends on what your functions are, what your toy or your module is going to be doing. Uh, so I'm just going to pick one. And the property is image. So this is going to be a, a non-animated sprite. Alright, so let's take a look at this. What's important here is that I'm assigning the image an asset ID and it's broken into two pieces. There's the module that it belongs to and then there's the asset name itself. And I can locate that inside of the module itself, toy assets, go into version 1, assets, images, and then I find football. Now you'll notice there's a football PNG, and this is an actual image file, but that's not the asset. If I open up football.asset.taml, this is my asset. The asset name is football, and it points to the football image. So that's where this comes from. And because this toy doesn't really need physics, it's just a simple example, this is where I'm going to use one of those member, uh, member functions. So here I've said that this is a static sprite. In other words, it doesn't, it's not affected by gravity. I'm not going to be applying uh, any kind of physics properties to it. I just want it to show up on screen and not move. And I guess for the last part, um, if I look back at my function, I'm calling sprite equals build image sprite. So that means I have to return it from this function. Right now, this object now exists in the engine, inside of the system, but it's not doing anything. So I need to return it, and that will place it inside of here. I'll catch it, and then I'll add it to the scene. Now there's something important, very, very important to note here. If I run, nothing, no sprite at all. I am using the Mitch Toy sprite, or yeah, the Mitch Toy and it's probably been successfully created, but we're not seeing it. The reason it's not being shown and actually why it is not being created is because it exists in a separate script and I need to execute that. So at the top of my create, as uh, for my habit, I usually execute all the scripts I need at first. So I'm going to exec. I'm going to give it a path relative to where this is. So it's dot slash scripts. And what was the name of that? MitchScript.cs. check that, lowercase m. So that's going to tell the engine to execute the content, contents of this so that this function will now be available. And let me try running. Look at that, there's my sprite. If I show my tools, it's got a sprite size of 5. And every time I click on it, you'll see my tooltip comes up, my sprite gets smaller. And what's going on so if I look back in my scripts, changing the sprite size between a value of 1 and 10, it'll call the set my sprite size, and then it will reset the toy, grab the size from that property, and then add it again. So I can actually make this 10, and it'll show up just fine. So that's a quick way to start testing out some toys. Uh, the sandbox system is not a, an empty tort to the project, but it's a great way for you to start rapid prototyping what you might be doing. Uh, just as another example, I will 
actually go in and let me find a, another another asset. Let's see. Yeah, poison cloud. That looks good. So if I look at this poison cloud asset, it's called poison cloud wobble. So I'm just going to copy that and replace football with this. <clears throat> and it's not an image; it's an actual animation. So I'm going to change this image. The animation. Save. Let me run real quick. And there's my animated sprite. I can make it larger. And there it is. So this is a great way for you to start testing out any assets that you or an artist might be creating. So you can just quickly throw those inside of there. But let's say I want this to exist in its own module, for example. So let's see. That was using the impact poison cloud sprite. Now we're just going to switch back to a image just for the sake of making this a little easier. I'm going to grab that football I'm just going to copy those out real quick just to save time. I'm going to go back into mine. I'm going to go to the assets images. I'm going to copy that in and now I'm going to do something that may irritate uh, non-United States football fans. I'm going to call this soccer.asset and I can already hear some of my uh, UK friends cringing. And I need to of course change the name. And if I go back to my script, I'm going to change this to my toy soccer and if this is all correct my asset should get loaded and there it is it's got my assets, it's found them, it's using them and it's all good so just to recap I created a module and then I give it a definition I filled out the most required functions that are suggest suggested for the sandbox, which are uh, reset, destroy, and create. You can actually create a module that doesn't use a script file at all. For example, I can go into the toy assets and notice there's no scripts at all. It's just a module file that says I contain assets, and so I can just reference it. But from uh, Mitch Toy, it required information, so I name this create and destroy. You can name this whatever you want. You just need to make sure that's reflected in the module. I have a reset function which gets used by the sandbox itself and then I've assigned a uh, an accessor to a property that I display inside of my numeric option. I executed my script, my custom script, defined a sprite, returned it to variable and added it to the scene. Really, really basic stuff and I've stretched this video out to explain it but what you're looking at here is two minutes worth of work just to get something rend rendering on screen and even less if you've done this a few times before and then you can make it as complex as you want. Uh, as an example I can jump into one of our more uh, let's see complex toys I would say that would be for instance soft body You can see this has a lot more properties and a lot more GUI options. But once you get these set up, it makes it so that you can actually experiment with physics without having to constantly modify code, which that can be kind of complex at times. So if I switch to the soft body toy, so I here I have a really fun toy, you know, just some globbies. And I can change the size of them, the number, so I have a lot more but they're still reflecting the same kind of physics properties. I can then knock down the node restitution so that they're really really bouncy. Or I can put it up very high.
And now I can see maybe this is not the right property for me because it's messing everything up. But the great thing is, is I don't have to go in and start changing script code to fix this. I can just use these GUI controls. And that's why we ship the Sandbox project. It may not be a completely from scratch Tort 2D game, but it's a great way for you to rapid prototype and get something going on screen and show it off to folks. And then the really great part is that if I wrote this module in a more isolated way, for instance, if I did not use sandbox like things, you know, get rid of the add numeric option, uh, make use of a different scene name, I can grab this module and just send it to anyone. In fact, I could, if someone's using the sandbox project, I can literally just zip up Mitch Toy, send it to them. If they unzip it and throw it into the modules folder, they have it. And this is going to be a great vehicle for people sharing behaviors, sharing asset packs if you want to make content and sell it on the store. This is a great delivery mechanism. It's, a, it's an excellent way for someone to just download your product and immediately start using it without having to go crazy on custom scripting.